Okay, um, let's get started. Thanks everybody for coming here um, to hear about the architecture of uh, Yana's uh, Master of Clinical Science thesis. Um, Yana is an MD uh, from Western, and currently she is a practicing family physician in Ottawa. Um, so I'm going to turn the floor over without further ado so that she can give you um, the spiel on the thesis. Over to Yana. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to attend my presentation this afternoon. Um, my thesis evaluated the determinants of job satisfaction in family physicians. I would like to begin um, by explaining a little bit about why I chose uh, to investigate fam job satisfaction. Uh, when I first started this research, I was a much, much younger, um, newly practicing family physician, and I selfishly wanted to know a little bit more about what draws physicians to family medicine, but also what keeps them there. And then at the same time, um, I had an interest in the changing demographics around me. Um, I was a member of the first graduating class from Western to, um, to have an equal gender split. And then I had just completed a residency training program where there were well over half of the trainees were female. So I wondered, was the increasing presence of female family physicians uh, changing the job satisfaction dynamic in practice? Uh, so I began the work with a literature review um, of job satisfaction in general, uh, followed by reviewing the research uh, in medicine and then family medicine in particular. The qualitative study was born out of the literature review, which helped in framing the format and the questions for the study. The quantitative research um, was initiated after the uh, qualitative study was completed and the variables investigated were informed by both the literature review um, and by the results of the qualitative analysis. So job satisfaction, um, it was first studied at the turn of the last century in an effort to improve worker efficiency. The field has shifted from evaluating workplace conditions to an understanding that there are both intrinsic and extrinsic factors that are important to job satisfaction. Extrinsic factors uh, relate uh, more to the external um, parts of the worker's environment, so the work environment itself, colleagues, those sorts of de determinants. And then intrinsic factors are those that are generic to the job, the type of work, personal rewards. <coughs> Uh, the definition of job satisfaction has also evolved over time to place a greater emphasis on the affect of the worker and Locke described uh, a pleasurable or positive emotional state resulting from appraisal of one's job. In 1975, Hackman and Oldman uh, went further with their job characteristics model in addressing the complexities of the relationships between workplace affect and outcomes and this is the job characteristics model. So uh, they have five core job dimensions. Um, these include skill variety, task identity, task significance, autonomy, job feedback. Uh, these are linked to three critical psychological states, so meaningfulness of the work, responsibility for the outcome, and then knowledge of the actual results um, of the work activities. And then these are then lead to personal and, and work outcomes. So movement within the model um, is moderated by the individual workers and needs for growth and that's both personal growth and professional growth. So a worker who has less growth need would have uh, less importance uh, for these four, the five uh, core job dimensions and then they would have poor personal and work outcomes. So the model helps inform um, the upcoming discussion about individual determinants of job satisfaction. So to summarize the main findings um, of the literature review, these are the, some of the most important determinants of job satisfaction um, found in most workplaces. Uh, so income, it's a consistent factor. It appears uh, to be less important, um, the absolute income seems to be less important than the satisfaction with income itself. Uh, age, in general, older workers are more satisfied than their younger uh, counterparts. Uh, Work-life balance. A worker's disposition, uh, which it can account for 10 to 25% um, of a worker's job satisfaction. 
workplace relationships, uh, urban versus rural geography, and rural uh, workers tend to be more satisfied than their urban counterparts. Uh, gender, so the research is equivocal um, as to whether or not uh, gender influences job satisfaction. And then the opportunities for career advancement. Within the medical world, uh, there are determinants that are more specific to our practicing lives. So these include control and autonomy. Physicians who feel that they have greater control um, uh, feel that they have greater uh, job satisfaction than their peers who sense a lack of control. The doctor-patient relationship is essential. Um, access to specialist care, participation in academic activities, um, both research and education. Uh, the provision of quality care to patients, and, uh, and what, uh, the number of hours worked uh, per week, and the provision of on-call services. So the qualitative study um, involved individual, in-depth, semi-structured interviews with practicing family physicians in Ontario. An equal number of male and female physicians uh, were interviewed, and physicians from urban, rural, academic, and non-academic uh, practices participated. The age range of the family physicians was between 30 and 75 years of age. Uh, the transcribed interviews were independently reviewed um, by two investigators, and the, they were coded using a constant comparative approach. A uh, final interpretation was performed using an immersion and crystallization analysis to elicit important themes, and thematic saturation occurred after 16 interviews. So I'd like to share a few um, of the comments uh, from our participants. You have to be cognizant of it. You have to be cognizant that a balance has to be maintained. And this was from a male rural academic physician. One aspect of satisfaction that I'm totally dissatisfied with is the amount of paperwork that I was always told about, but never fully understood. Female, 39, urban, non-academic. I have no question that this is the absolute only thing I ever wanted to do. I can develop it and make it into things that you know I may not want to do this now at my point in my career and I can change it, but I would never ever question not being a family physician. Female, 48, urban, academic. Uh, so this is a summary of our qualitative results. Overall, physicians in this study were satisfied. There were no gender differences uh, noted. Um, and nine themes or determinants uh, came out of our analysis. And so these included the importance of a positive work-life balance, uh, a low administrative load, less paperwork, uh, control, flexibility, uh, uh, and that flexibility both within career choices and within clinical practice a satisfying personal life, uh, collegiality, personal work rewards, and uh, these included intellectual challenge as well as um, continuing education, uh, variety within the practice, and access to specialist care. So to summarize, um, there were no gender differences noted. And the nine themes echoed and confirmed existing factors found in current uh, literature. There were a few comments that did not become themes, but were interesting. Um, and one of these came from uh, two female respondents uh, who felt that the use of electronic medical records was a negative factor in their job satisfaction. Limitations to the study include that it's representative of only a small population of family physicians in Ontario. And additionally, the interviews took place over a four-year period from 2007 to 2011. So it's possible um, that there were situational differences um, in, in pr the practice climate you know, in Ontario at the time that may have influenced the participant responses. So this brings us to the second half um, of our research, which was a secondary analysis of the 2013 National Physician Survey. Uh, it's a national survey. It was distributed uh, to all physicians in the country. And for this project, variables were chosen from known determinants in the literature and were influenced by the findings of the qualitative study. So there were two dependent variables uh, that were evaluated, both job satisfaction and satisfaction with work-life balance. 
During the qualitative interviews, um, there was a significant emphasis on the importance of work-life balance, and so much so uh, that I felt that it would be appropriate to examine this separately from job satisfaction. The satisfaction uh, variables uh, within this, the survey were rated on a five-point scale from very dissatisfied to very satisfied. And for the purposes of this study, um, they were categor categorized into a dichom dichotomous variable of satisfied and dissatisfied. So the um, dissatisfied category included very dissatisfied, dissatisfied, and neutral. And then the satisfied category included very satisfied and satisfied. So these are the 12 um, independent variables uh, that we looked at. So gender, uh, age, uh, primary practice population, and this was uh, in four categories. So this was um, inner city, um, urban, suburban, um, small town, and rural and remote. Uh, practice type, so whether uh, the physician um, identified themselves as a focused practice uh, family physician, so that would be uh, emergency uh, medicine, um, anesthesia, sports medicine, but as a family physician, um, or a more generalist uh, family physician. Um, involvement in academic activities, whether or not on-call services um, are provided, um, and then the uh, remuneration model or method of payment. And so this was categorized um, into three uh, different categories. So first was fee-for-service remuneration. The second category was other, which encompassed all other methods of payment. So that's salary, capitation, sessional, you know, fee, um, per diems, that sort of thing. Uh, the third category is a blended category. Uh, and this uh, meant that if uh, more than 90% of your income came from more than one source, you were in that category. So that would include physicians who were paid um, by a fee-for-service model and by capitation. Uh, they, they would fit into that, uh, that category. Uh, so province, um, and so we categorized that into Atlantic provinces, Quebec was separate, Ontario was separate, Manitoba and Saskatchewan to, um, uh, together, and then Alberta and BC were separate. The territories were excluded. Uh, the number of hours worked per week, um, whether or not an electronic medical record was used in this practice, and this also came out of um, our qualitative analysis. So like I said, not kind of a theme within that analysis, but kind of interesting commentary that, um, um, that I decided to pursue. Um, the number of years licensed, um, and then satisfaction with the payment model, uh, which was our proxy for income satisfaction because there wasn't an income satisfaction uh, question uh, in the survey. Um, and this satisfaction variable, like the other satisfaction variables, was measured on that five-point scale, so it was also categories into the dichotomous satisfied or dissatisfied. So um, uh, what did uh, our participants look like? So the survey had a 17% response rate, um, and so as a result, the data was weighted uh, based on gender, age, province, and, um, and practice type. And that was family physician or specialist practice type. 51% of the respondents were male. Uh, the majority were between 45 and 64 years of age. Most were from central Canada, so Quebec or Ontario, um, and most had more than 20 years in practice. Half work in an urban and suburban environment, and most are remunerated through a blended model. 60% uh, were focused uh, practiced uh, family physicians, and a similar number provide on-call services, use an EMR, and are involved in academic activities. For our dependent variables, as you can see, professional life satisfaction um, was rated highly at 72%. Um, there was a more moderate response of 49% uh, for work-life balance satisfaction. The data was analyzed uh, using binomial logistic regression and goodness of fit was tested. The missing values in the data set ranged from 5% to 10%. Um, and so in the reported regression, um, list of wise deletion was used. So the missing values weren't included in, um, in the primary analysis. But to better characterize the impact of this kind of larger um, missing um, data, the missing values were coded as a separate variable and then the regression analysis was rerun. This is a summary of our results. Uh, the white bubbles uh, represent uh, results that are consistent with previous literature, and the orange bubbles represent novel associations. 
So this is uh, professional life satisfaction. So with respect to professional life satisfaction, there was no gender association uh, noted. There were positive associations um, with older physicians, um, Quebecois physicians, focused practice uh, family physicians, which was a novel finding, physicians involved in academic activities, urban and small town physicians, physicians who don't use electronic medical records, and those who worked fewer hours per week. With respect to satisfaction with work-life balance, um, and, and these bubbles are the same categories, the orange are the more novel associations, uh, there was a positive gender association here <coughs> with male physicians um, more satisfied with their work-life balance. Um, other associations included uh, physicians licensed 15 to 19 years, those from the Atlantic provinces, focused practice family physicians again, physicians with academic, who had academic involvement, um, urban and inner city physicians, those who don't use electronic medical <coughs> records again, that came up, um, working fewer hours per week, not providing on-call services, um, and uh, remuneration through a fee-for-service model. The limitation of the study was primarily the low response rate um, of 17%. Uh, this was mitigated by the data weighting, and it's reassuring that our results are largely reflective and consistent of the body of literature and, and job satisfaction. The other significant um, limitation is that this was a secondary analysis, uh, so there wasn't the opportunity to fully evaluate um, some of the other determinants uh, that we also know are important to job satisfaction. So it's a good reminder that there's still a lot of work to be done um, and that the door is open for future research um, in the area. So overall, Ontario and Canadian physicians are satisfied. Uh, there's greater satisfaction with their professional lives than there is with their work-life balance. Our results in both of the studies confirm existing literature with respect to known determinants of physician satisfaction. And electronic medical use in the study was associated with decreased professional and work-life balance um, satisfaction, and this could be a negative determinant um, in general. And focused practice is conversely associated with greater overall work-life balance and um, professional life satisfaction. There are a number of potential um, implications uh, regarding our work. The first relates to electronic medical use um, in the country. There's a nationwide push to um, increase access to EMRs, to digitize uh, primary care practices, and I think there are a lot of very good reasons for this. Um, but perhaps we need to be looking at why physicians, uh, why there seems to be this association with decreased um, satisfaction. Uh, there are some studies that suggest that uh, physician dissatisfaction with electronic medical records arises more from their dissatisfaction with the record itself or the poor quality of the record rather than actually using the technology. Um, the second point uh, is access to primary care. Uh, so the, our finding that focused practice is associated with, uh, with increased job satisfaction um, might have implications if more physicians continue to choose focused practice uh, and as a result don't also provide general or uh, traditional primary care um, services. And previous research has demonstrated a clear relationship between um, physician satisfaction um, and retention in the clinical workforce, um, as well as uh, recruitment into family medicine. So family physician um, mentors who are more satisfied uh, tend to do a better job of encouraging trainees uh, to join family practice. So uh, taking a look at some of the modifiable extrinsic uh, variables uh, or determinants um, that we looked at uh, for um, you know, provincial and, uh, and uh, community organizations uh, might be something important to look into with respect to physician retention um, and recruitment. <coughs> While some facets of job satisfaction are well documented, uh, this work certainly opens up some areas where further research um, and inquiry are indicated and, uh, and it would be interesting to kind of see what happens in the future with respect to, uh, to some of these ideas. So I thank you all uh, for your time and your attention this afternoon. I have a long list of references that related to all of the satisfaction determinants here, so I'll just kind of 
page through them. You can let me know if you want me to page back through any of them if, if you're interested in them, because I know it's tiny uh, <coughs> font here. Um, but I'm happy to take any uh, questions uh, that you might have. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm interested in the focus practice yes. aspect, and I'm wondering <coughs> what kind of insights you have that might occur during the interviews and the So uh, that uh, I was hoping to get a little bit of that in the qualitative study, and I within the scope of it I wasn't really able to and so that was why I started out with that academic non-academic kind of rural urban look um, because I was hoping that maybe some of that would come out if I really started restricting to kind of you know emerge family docs and you know it was getting to be kind of uh, large so there wasn't a lot uh, that came out of those interviews other than that really important kind of feature, the, the important features of, of flexibility and variety in practice. Um, so those were really important and I think as I was reflecting on the quantitative results of this kind of focused practice, I thought well perhaps I'm looking, rather than looking at focused practice as an area where your variety is decreased, perhaps some physicians look at it as, as an opportunity to improve the variety and certainly improve the flexibility in some areas. So you can see, imagine for example in emergency medicine, you know, that you know, having a, a schedule that's fixed and you know, uh, there's some benefits to that. Uh, but for there, I think, and I can't comment because the National Physician Survey didn't actually get this data, but the physicians who checked off that focused practice, I don't know what percent of time they spend in that focused practice. So it could be, you know, that you're practicing sports medicine, you know, two half days a week or something, and you're also, you know, providing primary care. And so that gives you then increased variety and, and flexibility in what you're doing. And so I wonder if, if that's a piece, but that's where the data that we have isn't sufficient to really kind of make that, that conclusion. So. Thanks. You're welcome. Yes? Um, the EMR part was interesting. Yes. <laughs> um, so I just wondered if the survey asked at what stage they were at in their EMR adoption or if it said the type or kind of EMR that you're using? Uh, so I don't recall them asking about the specific EMR that was being used, like brand name um, EMR. There were a few questions about um, how much do you use it, what do you use it for, you know, uh, just entering data or retrieving data or for, you know, kind of more complex um, uh, areas in, uh, in primary care. I didn't look at those questions, so there are a few of those on the National Physician Survey, and I know that they were looking at expanding some of those questions um, in future years. So I think that's an area certainly where there's um, a lot of research currently being done, but, ne but not necessarily kind of any clear reasons. Um, other than, like I said, there are a few studies that do show that there's certainly a lot of dissatisfaction um, with the quality. And for some physicians, a lot of dissatisfaction initially. Um, you know, so like you're saying, kind of that time frame when, when they start. And, um, it, but the physicians who are satisfied with it in some of these studies are very satisfied. And so, but, but there's a little bit of that kind of skew to, to dissatisfactions. Yes. John, thank you very much for you're a, welcome. a very interesting presentation. And nice to see you again. Yes, <laughs> you too. <laughs> um, my question is about, uh, I noticed that about 60% of your, uh, mm -hmm. of the quantitative, uh, the individuals in the quantitative study were focused practitioners. Yes. Which is very high. That's what I thought as well, yes. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but I, I wanna, that's, that the my nature of my question is mm -hmm. actually about the other 40%, those sure. who are not focused. And I'd like, I'd like your thoughts on what you would recommend in terms of first for policy change from the from the government, mm -hmm. from the government perspective, policy issues, and secondly, what the college should do, given that your point, the second point in your summary mm -hmm. there was that le there we could be facing a lack sure. of access to the traditional comprehensive family physician. Um, and given that, could you think of what would be your own thoughts about policy changes mm -hmm. that might help support those who continue to provide comprehensive care and what our own college should do to, do to further the same purpose. So this, 
I know it's not part of your study. Yeah. You're, you're, now that you've finished it, you're able to, to win it. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think certainly, um, well, rewarding, so both you know, remuneration-wise, but in other ways, and, and putting value on, on generalist uh, primary care. I think I'm calling this generalist primary care, which isn't really a term, um, but on kind of traditional primary care, I think that's important. Um, and I, I, I'm not sure, uh, the part of this that I find very interesting that I wasn't able to get into uh, was this whole reason why um, we're choosing, uh, a lot of physicians are choosing focused practice. I had, uh, this was also kind of came out just, uh, you know, observing around me that I felt that a lot of my peers were choosing third year programs. Um, and, you know, now that I'm working with a lot of residents, I find that a lot of them are choosing extra training. And I'm not really clear if that comes out of a specific interest necessarily in that focused practice or does it come out of a feeling of not being prepared enough um, to go out there and, and to practice you know alone and I th we've changed a little bit about how we practice as family physicians there's more group practice and more so that idea of kind of being that solo practitioner and getting out there and, and doing everything it's there's not quite that same feeling anymore so I, I don't know if, if that's the reason, but I think maybe knowing a little bit more about the reason why people are choosing f will actually help us to take that step back and say to the college, okay, this is what we maybe need to encourage. And if 60% of, of these practicing physicians, and this group was, you know, physicians who have, have been in practice more than 20 years, and so uh, they were a slightly older, kind of more male-skewed group, but still very heavily focused practice. So if these are our mentors, uh, you know, and if these are the, the people who are supervising residents and, and medical students, and maybe we're also, you know, in our, our culture, you know, in training, saying that this is an expectation or that this is, you know, a route that is actually kind of maybe an equivalent or bigger option than, than that, that route of, of regular primary care practice. So I'm not sure. I, like I said, I, I hesitate to kind of put all of these focused practice physicians into a non-primary care <coughs> category because I don't think they all are. I, you know, I, I think that there's certainly a good chunk of them who consider themselves focused practice but actually do provide, you know, primary care. But, but I think, yes, I, I think that thought of access over time and if we all kind of subspecialize within our primary care practices, where does that leave, you know, our patients? So uh, it's not really a very good answer for you because I don't have a very good answer. <laughs> <but> <laughs> it's, it's worth thinking about. Yes. We need to understand this better, yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Great presentation. Thank you. <coughs> I you know, My PhD was on uh, female family physicians working on well-being. Yes. So here we are 26 years later. Still talking about it. Still talking about yeah. it. Yeah. And, and the, the work-life balance issue mm -hmm. is still huge. Um, that women are still doing so I think there is a shift so uh, you know what came out of the qualitative research because I, d I came in with a bias uh, of thinking well this is why I did this right because <laughs> I thought maybe there is a difference maybe female you know physicians you know places greater emphasis on work-life balance and a lot of the research before did you know show that and you know there's some studies that say that you know married female physicians you know find their work-life balance more important than non-married female physicians and so there's a lot of kind of you know bits and pieces to that um, but no, in the qualitative interviews, certainly it was clear that both genders felt that this was important. You know, this is not just a female issue. This is an all physician issue that work-life balance is important and that we're recognizing that a little bit more and that's, you know, so I, so I think that's actually a good step. Uh, in the quantitative analysis, obviously, work-life balance is still an issue for everybody, <coughs> again, right? You know, that was only 49%, you know, satisfaction there with that work-life balance. So for everybody, that was an issue. Um, certainly, the male physicians, you know, did have, you know, greater work-life balance satisfaction than their female peers. Um, and so, so there is, I still, uh, you know, like I think there is work to be done there. Um, but like I said before, this was a slightly older, you know, group of physicians in practice for a little bit longer. Um, and maybe we're just seeing kind of that tail end of, of a shift that, uh, mm -hmm. that maybe, you know, younger physicians, you know, and I don't, I, I, I really hate to kind of put that in that category because I think that, you know, all physicians of all ages really appreciate <laughs> their work life balance. But I, think <laughs> I think you're right, and there is a gender. <coughs> the gender change mm -hmm. is a generational change. Yeah. 
And so my, my other comment is I've been invited to do the plenary on work-life balance at CCME in April. Okay. I'm going to bow out. I'm going to send you. <laughs> <laughs> it was fabulous. It was really good. Thank you. Yes. Okay, on that high oh. note, I think we will curtail the questions because Jana now has to face the official. More questions. <laughs> so thank you for coming and another round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.